I'm trying to remember we used to have this thing where we'd take the piss out of Angoulême. I have no idea why. And I'm trying to think, was there somebody who told us they were from Angoulême and we thought they were the big tosser? And that's why every time we'd say, oh, where do we go for all this? Oh, we're to Angoulême. Like it was the most ridiculous place in the world. And I know absolutely nothing about Angoulême. So. Fair one. Yeah, we're here at Rue de Pontreau. There's the bus, sorry. There's the bus, bye bye. Um, but yeah, I'm wondering can we break into the building because I know there's a code you need. Here's the bus stop where we used to go into town. Ah. Yeah, well, that's the bus stop where when we were going home for Christmas, Sarah Nugent left her makeup bag or a bag with, really, oh, there a bag it is. with her makeup and all of her presents for all of her family in it. And then it was either like, go back for the bag, she realised three steps on, go back for the bag and possibly miss the flight, or leave the bag and go home with no presents. She decided to go back for the bag and possibly miss the flight. <laughs> Here are the famous uh, poles that Cormac reversed into. His little colt. <laughs> so we were sort of cinquième étage. Were there doctors here then? I. Oh, open. I think I may just have seen the code that she entered. <laughs> so we can possibly break into the building in a few seconds. I'm just going to let them go upstairs. And then we'll attempt to break into the building. Yes. In the lift. Donald remembers the lift well because she got stuck in the lift for like hours and was shouting and nobody could hear her. It was very sad. Anyway, she got out eventually. If they're only like us, maybe they're still in bed. Cool. Having been to Café du Théâtre, <laughs> Blues Rock Café, and après au Grand Goût, jusqu'à 5 heures du matin, and after that, you come home and cook some pizza and uh, put down the shutters and go to bed for a few hours, but I don't think there's anybody there's in. There's nobody in. It's kind of sad. Hold up. No. That was <laughs> if we were really bored, and there were days when we were really fucking bored, um, we would throw our shoes down and see how far we could throw them from the fifth floor balcony. <laughs> And the aim was to get the shoes from the fifth floor balcony inside the wire fence of the playground. Hopefully there were no children in the playground at the time. Well, we weren't trying to hit the children with our shoes. Or but, you know, that was like an added bonus. <laughs> so, if you look... One, two, three, four, five... Oh, maybe someone lives there now. Like someone normal, because look at all the fucking plants. Never had that many plants. Well, that's four, isn't it? One, two. Oh, zero. G, yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, so our one is, as expected, shuttered. <laughs> and presumably, there were students there and it'll be empty now until September. It's to film the walk, because, you know, Blonde and Sarah will be very familiar with the walk to Leclerc. Do we have to walk the whole way to Leclerc with the camera on? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> See, no. There's only so much battery and there's only so much free space on the card. So well, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna yell cut. Okay. Cut. <laughs> Is this another one of these like the walk to the clear gonna be? The ramp that looks like. I hope we're gonna speed them up or something.
ne peut pas faire le patinage. Oh, c'est triste. So, contrary to popular belief, we did actually wash our clothes when we lived here. And uh, we used to go to that lab every week. Here's the university. It's still as ugly as I remember. Oh yeah, look at that modern architecture. University is still as shitty as it ever was when we were here, so we've missed nothing really. So my memory is correct. The best thing about the university is the road out of it. So we're here at the bus stop. And, uh... Bye bye, bye bye. So, part of the day. Well, here we are back at La Gare and it was a good day and yeah, it's kind of strange. It feels a bit lonely being down here sitting outside La Gare, like feel a bit homesick or something. <laughs> <laughs> that must be a hangover from 10 years ago. Like a Pavlovian response to this train station. Yeah, yeah, like I'm here outside the train station and what do I feel? I feel homesick. Even though it's Friday and I left Ireland on Wednesday. <laughs> so it's not a genuine homesickness. It's just like, I guess that's what I associate with Lagarde du Poitiers. But um, yeah, so highlights of the day were uh, lunch in Magenta, pretty cool. Uh, going back to the Patinoir, checking out the university, uh, breaking into. <laughs> Our house in Rue du Pont Row, but then discovering that there was nobody home. Um, but you know, I know the access code if I come back in the next year because uh, they don't change it very often. It's one four seven eight. <laughs> and um, and then, well, I was kind of sad that the Blues Rock Cafe is gone. And we went to Book Mulligan's earlier on, and it was closed. It wasn't open yet for the day. It was supposed to open at five. We went back around twenty past five. But it still hadn't opened, so I figure, I don't know, people who work there are still hungover would probably be a good guess. <laughs> so it'll probably open around 7, just as we're leaving Poitiers. But um, yeah, I recommend to those of you watching, uh, come back here, check it out. It's good fun. Um, but you, you really only need a day, unless there was a gang of about 20 of us going to La Grande. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this has been uh, Postcards from Poitiers, uh, over and out.